The big advantage of looking at cell-free DNA, and this is something that I always say, is that we have an extra dimension when we do this type of study, mm -hmm. and that's time. Dying tumor cells can release DNA into the bloodstream, and scientists like Dr. Jose Costa are researching cell-free DNA to better understand its importance in diseases like lung cancer. Please welcome and join me, Dr. Costa. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Costa. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Cell-free DNA, we've known about it, I believe, for, for some time now. But how has technology helped us study it now? I mean, how has the field changed over time? So, uh, yeah, as you said, the, the concept of cell-free DNA has been along for many, many years. Mm -hmm. the, the problem was that we didn't have really any technology that allow us to, to have the sensitivity enough to look at these small pieces of DNA that are in circulation. Mm -hmm. So I think it was only with the introduction of digital PCR and um, the high throughput of next generation sequencing that we start to have tools back in the lab that we can finally have a look at what is going on in the, in the bloodstream. So the way that we try to um, understand what is the information that we are getting from the cell-free DNA being released by the tumor is just by using very high sensitive technologies that allow us to identify the genetic mutations that were essentially the cause of the tumor in the beginning so that then we can use that information to see how the tumor is being evolving during the um, progression of disease. Which kits did you use? So currently we use the MagMax um, cell-free DNA kit. Okay. We've just used others in the past, but now this seems to be the one that gives us more reliable and robust results for cell-free DNA. How long is the cell-free DNA usually? I mean, 130 base pairs or? Yeah, around 140, 160. Okay. It ranges on this size. But does that little piece of DNA have enough information? Yeah, yeah it, it's enough because it, in a way it represents the entire genome that has been shattered in many different pieces. Mm. So if you have high throughput machines that can look at all this information and stitch it back together, mm. then you get a complete view of what is the genome in the tumor cells. Interesting. And how, how deep do you have to sequence to get information? So that's a um, quite popular question. How deep you need to go? Uh, from our experience, we've seen that up to 500 times depth is okay if we are looking to variants that are present in at least 5%, with an allelic fraction of at least 5%. Okay. That's for us to have 100% sensitivity of what mm -hmm. we are looking at. Mm -hmm. We have some examples that we can go below 5%, up to 1%. And for those, we use the Quant Studio 3D okay. digital PCR machine so that we can give a higher robustness to our results. And you were able to... to yeah, so know. all the tests we've done, there's a very high concordance on That's what is great. positive is positive, what is negative is negative. When it comes to data analysis, um, how do you make sense out of all that data? It's not easy. The, the big advantage of looking at cell-free DNA, and this is something that I always say, is that we have an extra dimension when we do this type of study, mm -hmm. and that's time. So this gives us an extra, well, how should I say, an extra robustness to, to what we are looking. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, we, uh, there is, until today that I know of, no single bioinformatic algorithm that will tell you what you should be looking at. So I understand you've been using the PGM for your research and you recently transitioned to using the S5. How has the transition been? So most of my work has indeed been using the ion PGM. It was only about two to three weeks that we have the S5 XL back in the lab. And of course, we were very much curious to see how the, the new machine would, would work. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that I was not really expecting nothing very different because the technology is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the only big difference is the, in the simplicity of working with the machine. Now you lose all the fun of preparing reagents. Now <laughs> you just put the bottle back in the machine and, and, it's, and it, it starts to run. So it's, I think it's just the simplicity of the machine. So it, it has made your life yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, so I think the, for the people in the lab, they are really happy <laughs> because they have less uh, work to do uh, around the machines. That's great. That's great to hear. And so what, what does the data look like? So concerning the data, um, as I said, I've only had the machine for two, three weeks. So uh, I just did a quick look at some of the libraries that actually I have run in parallel using the PGM and then also with the S5. Mm -hmm. And there is some tendency, I have to be careful saying this, but it seems that the data might be a little better quality especially on the bidirectionally reading of the amplicons. 
the future needs to give more support to this. Absolutely, and we will look forward to, to that from you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Costa. It's been a pleasure learning about your research. Thank you, it was a pleasure.